why I was wrong about Shilonen. Shilonen is definitely a character that has a place in Genshin Impact's current roster. She's strong, she has the ability to give that resistance shred as well as perfectly use the Cinder City artifact set. This means that not only does she get rid of resistance for enemies, but she also gives you a little bit of elemental damage bonus, which is really helpful. Not to mention that she's very easy to use and has some really good abilities in the overworld, so you can traverse around the place using her roller blades and her knight soul blessing. Now, I definitely thought that she would be the be all end all character for Gantrin Impact because she has so many things within her kit. Just alluding to that. She can heal characters with her burst. She can give that elemental resistance shred and elemental damage bonus thanks to the Cinder City artifact set. And she can also deal damage with her normal attack. So I definitely thought that she would be a character that has pretty much everything. She's got the strength, the support, and then the heals. But I was wrong. Even though she does have all those things within her kit, making her really powerful, I don't think that she is the be all end all character that I thought and kind of hoped that she would be. I do understand because making her that strong would kind of be bad for the game generally. She is still powerful, but not as strong as I thought. So yeah, I definitely think that she is still good and has merit and is really easily built thanks to her just defense related stuff. She only needs defense percentage and then a little bit of crit damage. You want to use her for damage, but other than that, all you need to focus on is leveling up her talents and you're pretty much good to go. She doesn't require too much and I think that is where her true value lies is she's not a very needy character. You can easily use her with what she has and she brings a lot to the table anyway. So there is the fact that she has a longevity factor. She will last for a really long time. I don't think there's going to be much competition in her role specifically because the only one that rivals her at this current moment is maybe Kaza or Bennett or something like that, right? Even though those characters are the big boys, you know, I think she definitely has a place and will last a really long time thanks to what she brings to the table. Right, even though I was wrong that she's going to be the be all end all character, she's still a character that has merit and has a lot of value. But there is a little bit of a thing with her kit is that she has a ceiling and that it all depends on her talents so she can get the maximum of 10 on her talents and you would get a certain percentage resistance shred and that's it you can't get more including her artifact set you can't get more than 40 percent elemental damage bonus which makes sense but it just means that she has a cap She's definitely easy to use and a character that is here to stay. A lot of characters nowadays that are released are usually like damage, you know, damaging characters or characters that are having a very niche role. But the thing is, Navi is generally a very unique case when it comes to Geo characters because Geo characters tend to need Geo teammates. And that's just how it was for the longest time. It's just now we are getting these new characters that have the ability to stay in these very well-rounded diverse teams with element different elements other than Geo. And then you have your support. So like for example, Goro was a support that was released in Inazuma. And I still think that he belongs in Geo team. So like they have that niche and they can't really go much further than that. But nowadays, Genshin has been a little bit better than that and has been providing supports that can be used more than just that specific team, such as the recent Kachina. Kachina has the ability to do sub DPS damage without needing any other Geo teammates, which is perfect. Now, I do think future characters um, like maybe Aroron or Chaska are going to have a different factor when it comes to being in the game for example maybe they're a dps character maybe they're a support character either way they're going to be very specific within their own roles 
as a DPS character and a support role for Night Soul Blessing and for all the Natlan stuff. Which is definitely, it makes sense because it's the Natlan region, of course they're going to do that. But at the same time, I feel like characters such as Shilonen are very hard to come by where I don't think it is only going to be based on Natlin and you won't be like confined to specific things and specific things I have to use rather you just go on and use her in any region in any place in the abyss and wherever and they would still be really really good I mean hey they did a good job with the likes of Kinnich as well as with Molani so I have high hopes for the characters like Chaska or Aurora and they're going to be pretty decent in their own way and still have a place within Kenshin Impact's roster. I don't know, I said a lot of things and I kind of jumbled up what I wanted to say is that Shilona is actually just pretty good. <laughs> and I definitely think that she is a character that has longevity and I cannot wait to see what kind of other characters that we might see that rivals her in the future. Yeah, that's going to be pretty much it. Let me know what you guys think. See you guys in the next one very soon. Goodbye. Thank you.